Okay, at 712, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Let's start with roll call. Mr. McGreevy, will you start us off? Brian McGreevy, Ward 2. Travis Sherman, Ward 1. Deborah McIsaac, Mayor. Brian Sidney, Ward 2. Nikki Wyatt, Ward 1. Okay, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Into the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Now we're looking at the July 18 minutes, and we're going to try to get that approved. Anybody have any feedback on that? The whole thing I saw was out of executive session. We did not come out at the same time we went in. We came out at 9 23. Okay. Other than that, you look good. Make the motion to approve what you edit. I'll second that. Okay, so we got a first, we got a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that's approved. Let's look at August 8th. Aiden, my note. Make motion to approve. Got a first? Second. Go second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Um, motion passes. Um, okay, now we have a claims tables. Is that the pink sheet? Yes. Any questions? I have a question. Sure. When are we going to be done with Rasta? When I get confirmation that we can be done with Rastec. I don't have a full confirmation that we have all of the data that we need. And so right now they're safe five lineage. Okay. All they're doing is they're holding server data, is what that okay. part is. That's it. I all the to approve the claims as is. Okay, we got a first. I'll second. And a second. All those in favor say aye. Yeah. Any opposed? McGreevy, where are you at? Aye. <laughs> Motion passes. <laughs> okay, public time. Going once. I was scared about the chickens, but I know John said maybe next month we can address that again. Yes, um, but we've been a little busy with our to-do list. So, but um, next month, I actually have it right here to put on next month's agenda, so we have that covered and we'll get that done. So you can start. When did when do you start like making chicken yeah. planning? Like when? Because it's not in the spring. Because that's when you get your chicks. Okay, is in the spring. So the fact that really be until next the season's perfect. Okay, so we have time, right? Okay, so the chicken hasn't flown the coop yet, is what you're saying. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help it. I had to do one. I had to just one. Just one. All along. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so yes, next month. Okay. Yeah. And then um anything else for public time? Okay. Uh, let's see here. John, do we have the ability to move the agenda around a little bit so that way guests can do what they need to do? Or how do, how do I want to do yeah. that? By consent, you can reorder the agenda. Okay. Okay, so what I'd like to do is we have two items for old business, the ball field facilities agreement, which we're going to talk about pretty quickly here, but the city employee wage review, I'd like to move that down to um, under the updates. So then we can talk about that without having everybody's time taken up. So if we could move the old business employee wage review after reports, that would be great, but I need a motion to do that. 
make a motion to move the, the wage review to under legal updates. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So we got a first, we get a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, McGravy. Um, any opposed? Motion passes. So now let's just go to the ball fields facilities agreement. Um, Edward did a great job. Fods did a great job. Um, Lacey Brown reviewed the um, items. John's reviewed it. And so Edward was kind enough to bring us this approved facility use agreement between the school and the city to be able to use um, the um, public parks. And so um, this is the exact same facility use agreement that you guys were given in the past. There's been no edits. And um, as a refresher, it's the exact same facility use agreement that Tri Valley uses. And it has been successful between the school and the city there. So my recommendation is to move forward with this and give me the authority to assign it so Edward can move on with this life and have dinner. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the uh, facilities agreement and authorize the mayor's I'll second. And authorize the mayor's signature. Thank you, John. And McGrady, you want a second? I'll, I'll second that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a first, I got a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. So. <laughs> I was confused by the word Lacey, would you do me a favor and um, attest this and make copies? So, and has one and I have one. Thank you. Um, she needs to test it. Yes, so she said. And then um, let's see here. Fire department contract. So, um, Mr. Koopman was kind enough to bring this up to us. We have an annual uh, a, arrangement with the fire department for them to provide those services with our very, um, we are very appreciative of the fire department and all that you do. So thank you for that. And so if I recall correctly, the only change on this is upping the 20,000 to 21,000. Is there anything else new on that? Uh, yeah, and then I'm ready for the point of information. Okay. I take it we're currently operating under that was signed effective one January 2023. No, this would be the first one. I don't remember signing it. Yeah, because I thought it was new to me too. So. <laughs> I don't have that. I mean, substantively, it totally makes sense. Um, you know, being the uh, lawyer here, I guess <laughs> there are just a couple of comments or questions. Paragraph one is vulnerable. Paragraph two says twenty-one thousand per year. I guess that's okay. The payments to be made on the first day of July, so that won't be made until July of next year. Correct. Typically, we won't we have the funds till the end of like this year. For this year. Oh, so I'm pretty wide open to pick a day. If you want to do it, July second to January second. Just a just a description. I mean, I'm. Uh, it's it's a material term, sure. And so the uh, the question is just so the council and the fire department uh, have a mutual understanding. It doesn't make any difference to me when the payment is made, but the way the contract is written, the way it reads to me is that the payment would be made on the first day of July during the term of the contract, which would be next July. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so the, uh, we'll so the time. Oh, okay, so on tiny plan. Anytime next year, like I said, oh. typically in the past we've done it for scratching stuff for 25th of December, and I don't see yeah. need to do that anymore. It's okay, we can we can do it in one day. We do it two days. Yeah, well, it's a long time, time to wait for your money. I guess I'm thinking of you guys, frankly. We're we're good on that part, you know. And then just to be consistent, the okay. and we can do it in You know, we've got some other funds that come into the spring. This would be in the summer. We have some more funding coming into fall, so we could break it up and kind of look order. So yep. this has been a verbal agreement between the city and the fire department. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, and I, you know, I, I like how paragraph one on the duties is written. It's very thorough. It reads good to me. Um, paragraph three talks about a 
payment plus 5% annual increase on a year to year basis. And so I think about the city contracting for the next fiscal year. And I think cost escalation is great, but I just want the same to be legal and clear. So should we address the annual increase next year, next year's contract? Rather than because we're kind of doing two things. We're we're providing for a contract term beginning January 1 of 2024. But then we're providing for a 5% annual increase, but you've already set the, the cost or the, to be paid for the 2024 year. Mike communicating. So is so what you're saying is that. Um, initiating an annual increase is something that could be done in the next year's contract as opposed to putting yeah. it in here. But yeah. I want to say, I think what what they're probably doing is so you give it this couple of months so we can add it to the budget. So we know every year that's what they're going to be asking is for that. Whether it be or charge is plus 5%, we know it during budget time so that we can set our budget already, have that figured out. So, I mean, like you said, though, it's yeah. 21 plus 5%, but that's next year. But really, we're we're setting the budget right now for next year. We have well, to set that down. And, and the lawyer in me wants to then put in there that the parties contemplate a 5% annual increase, which would be fine. It's just a little, I mean, I'm looking after the fire department. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but there's a plain plane to set. We'll get to the point where, you know, yeah, we can't do 5%. Okay. That's why I'm a little negotiating. Sure. Oh, and it's, I don't, I'm not. Uh, so is it that shall continue on a year to year basis? Yeah, I, I guess here's what I, here's what I'd like permission to do. You, you can approve this agreement, you can approve the terms of the agreement. I'd like to go back to my office and mess with it and just clarify these things. Sure. That way the fire department has served me in the council. It's just, it just needs to be tidied up a little bit. Mike, are you okay? Does that make sense? No. Okay. Can we have a motion to have John review this then? Make a motion. Do a motion all together. You want to and I would say, you know, authorize the mayor to sign the revised version because I'm not changing terms. I'm just tightening up a bit, making it more clear. Yep. Uh, how about that? Does that make sense? That's too fine. It's a little never having anything in writing. <laughs> well, exactly. And there's so much goodwill here. I'm frankly, you could do this on a handshake and I can find it. Well, well, because that's the way it's done. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'll, make, I'll make a motion for uh, to approve the uh, fire department contract and authorize the mayor to sign uh, said contract. Okay. Second. Second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're good to go. Mike, we'll get that to you as soon as we have it. Okay. And then um, coffee with council day. It's time. It's time again to do a coffee with council day. Everybody get out the calendars. Can Lacey Carrington make the coffee? I'll yes. make the coffee. <laughs> She's a coffee mista. I'll, I'll bring my own. I second Lacey on the coffee. Whatever. <laughs> Brian, you liked my coffee, didn't you? <laughs> what are we hey, looking at? You for a day or what's, what's your game plan? McGreevy, were you the one spearheading this? Did you have a month in mind? Are you thinking October? I was, I was it you? thinking early October. So Saturdays seem to work, right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. give us two Saturdays that work for you guys. Or what's your favorite Saturday? <laughs> Not the 14th. Not the 14th. 14th is out. Uh, I would assume probably not the 28th, just because that's creeping up on Halloween. Yeah. yeah. What he's got. How's the 21st for you guys? Are you doing one? 21st, I don't have anything on mine. How about yeah. 7th? How's the 7th look? 7th looks fine for me, yeah. too. How about you, Travis? Yep. Yeah. You guys want to do October 7th? Because, you know, we could have a blizzard on the 21st. <laughs> okay, October 7th worked for everybody? Okay, so let's go ahead and set that date. I don't think we need to make a motion on that. Let's just do it October 7th. Um, did, we, did we like 10 in the morning? 
Is that what we did last time? I can't remember. I can't remember if it was nine. Can we just have it at the same? Oh, yeah. Let's do it at the same time as whatever it was last time. Yeah, that's very nine. Okay, that worked. Any of it. Something I try to do every like six months or four months, three months. See what happens after this one. See if the attendance is higher, and if it is, maybe sooner than six months. Nine to eleven is the last time. Yeah, nine to eleven. It went a little bit longer because. Well, and because we were doing the sign thing, but another thing that we can do is maybe target invitations and like invite people, like maybe new citizens to come. So that way they have a chance to meet, you know, because like the people that already know you, they're like, I already know them. <laughs> Kathy's like, I'm not coming over. I just want coffee. Mm -hmm. I have a question about sure. it. It's open. Conversation, basically. Town hall meeting, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody kind of sits around at tables and we have coffee and some snacks and stuff. And you just chit chat and share, you know, whatever's, you know, important to you. Yeah. So that way the aldermen kind of know where it's at. Last time we had that sign, the public sign we wanted to ask everybody about. So that was initiated the conversation. And then from there, it went to different topics. Or we had like, I think it was three things. The park plan, which kind of just to learn what we could do with Balkan Heights Park. Yeah, the sign. I thought there was one other thing too, but I don't know what it was. Yeah, but definitely part of the design. So we can come up with some discussion topics so that way, and then let people know. Say so these are the things we're asking. Brian has something to say. What's that, Brian? No, no, I just was saying we talked about parks as well. I didn't catch that, sorry. Yes, we talked about parks. Oh. All right, cool. October 7th, uh, 9 to 11. Um, do you guys want us to like send out an invite to like anyone that's moved here in the last six months yeah. just to have? Yeah, okay. Be nice. okay. And so we'll do that. You put that in the shopper? You put that last time in the shopper? Yep, we did. Yep. We'll cover all the normal channels. Cool. And then, okay, so that one's done. Um, annual report and engagement letter signing. We need a group oh. from Shane Fish and we receive the initial report and we're going to review the leader. So this is just the general overview of what they did, right? Yeah. And then um, that's just not in there, yet, right? No. This is the this is the services agreement. <clears throat> yeah. So this isn't the actual report. This is us asking them to do the report. And so, um, so this is the basic services that we normally have to home wish and they just have a signed letter to do it. So it's budgetary comparison schedules and related notes, schedule of municipalities, um, proportionate share of um, the net pension liability, schedule of municipality contributions, with the South Dakota retirement system. Um, oh, that's not, I'm sorry, that's what's not getting on it, my bad. Um, okay, so the letter is the audit scope. This is standard. Basically just engaging in God. Yeah, this just basically gives us permission to have another audit, which we need. So that's all this says. If we're yep. to sign this in back, but I think it's both mayor and all of its signature. There we go. Make a so, motion to approve that. Letter signing, give the mayor authorization to sign said to the contract. Um, it's the services agreement. So, yeah. Make a motion. Second. Okay, we got a first, we got a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. And Nikki, I'm going to be having you the second signature since you're president. Okay. Get this done. I really like these pens. I know. Pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and pass that down to Ms. Lane and then pass it down to Ms. Lacey. Thank you. Okay, look at us just zipping through. Um, we got that one, and now we do the canvassing. Do I participate in the canvassing or do I step away from the canvassing? Maybe step away if you have viewers involved. In Perfect. Yeah. One less thing to do for me. <laughs> Come on up, Nikki. I told you one thing. Okay. Slow <laughs> We're going to take a siesta at the next year. Go buy us lunch or dinner. Yes. Don't look for at least a tree.
There you go. Oh, you do Oh man, that's the stuff over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I, so what do you want me to say? Well, I think Kathy is here. Kathy and uh, the old finance officer, I think, are going to carry this Okay. Up to that now. Just sit. Okay, I just get to say it. Oh, let me move my stuff. Mind your way. I don't think we're going to count them this time because there's. That was the only time I never counted them. Yeah. We, we kind of decided that maybe we should make you guys count this time. There's so many. <laughs> Thank you. But Why yes. did Brian count them? Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, then. Yep. Oh, yeah, the rolling line. We wouldn't worry if it's great to see you. You, you need to look at it so you can refer to the <laughs> revolve. You don't check tight. You don't do anything on it. Still seal. Yeah. You, you want to see it. Still on. Yeah. Well, that's it. Because this is going to be very embarrassing. That's what I don't like. Uh, Get oh, it. I'm the keyboard warrior right now. I'm not even a super strong person. Well, you need to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm going to make you feel lazy. That's right. Okay. Nice try. I know exactly. Okay. Oh my god, they all are white. So, I want you to pull the believe. Basically, to summarize the final role, did we did we go through and oh, I'm looking around. Um, I will state the voter role to the actual role book. Bring the check. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, correct? yeah. yeah. Do you have a full the book like? Yeah. Well, I think you compare this to the number of different Oh, we need to compare all of them. Not all. No, I need to give this random that I just told you through you and each letter. So it's one four. If you just want to go through this, then go through and check each random one, whatever you want. From the name, find the number, make sure that they're excited for the testers. All right. You know, if you have a single one, if you do want to be able to shoot that capacity. Okay. 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 So the first list of voters have to drop down as you come in and you just compare the book. Exactly. What's your 
Yeah, this is what came from the county, and this is how they are. This is what yep. they, the order came in with the vote with the absentees or the early voting all mixed in vote. Uh, and we had two provisional ballots, and I spoke with the auditor's office today, and neither of those will be valid in this county. What are the provisional ballots? Uh, they were people that were not in the not in this book from the county. Gotcha. And one of them um, needed to change their address because they were outside of the city limits. And the other one did not get received before the freeze of the voters. Yep. But they are all good for the next election. The rest of them are cleared. Good morning. Yep. Hey, I got a, I got a, you, can't, you can't pick that up. Pick your own name. <laughs> I want to buy some of the templates. I got three templates. Everybody should be proud to move this. This was an incredible turnout. I say that was a heck of a number. Yes. What's what is percentage? Oh, 50, about 50, 57. About just under. Usually it's like 20 something. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. If that, okay. if it, with a single election, no other county, state, yeah. school district, it's huge. Yeah. The right. gentleman I spoke with the auditor's office was before. Yeah. He said, way to go. Your town should be. So in the last two elections, voter turnout has been about 40 percent based on the voter registration list, 40 and 44 percent. So we've been running pretty good with the last two elections. This one, statistically, it comes up 50 percent. But when you remove the people that we know are not citizens, which is like around 185 people, then it bumps it up to 67 percent, which tells you if those numbers are accurate with the last two elections, we were still pushing probably 50 percent in the last two elections. So there's your fun fact. If anybody receives a postcard or, or a letter or anything in the mail, it's because we're trying to work up cleaning the voter roll. We have a lot of former residents that are on there that didn't change things, or we've got um, former high school students that are on there that have moved on to college or after the fact. Every page man. There's some home residents down. Yep. So this Good is to go. yeah. just having a bus open there too. I'm gonna get some. The, the, the calculations were Jamie Ingmanson at 224, Devin Kylich at 301. Therefore, Devin Kylich won the mayoral race. I do want to clarify as well when I sent the text out and I posted everything online that I put the wrong numbers on, but I left the sticky note here so anybody wants to see that. And that was mine. Oh. At 8 30 at night, I gave the note to her at 244 instead of 244. Yeah. So it's oh, so it was okay. So it was my fault. Yeah. Okay. The correct was 301 to 224. Okay, because I looked at that and I was going, I was doing subtraction last night. So okay. Uh, this is, I thought did we have to sign up on this? I thought should have uh, piece of paper saying that all the time. Or the election. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, if I send the local workers, then 
portion that you received is compared to the portion that you received. What you got, Macy? Excuse me. So I'm smarter than myself to figure out where it's going I always thought there was a simple sheet of interest. Well, you can always write a note. Well, I was going to sign it. Right. Underneath your name or something, city council resumes. Sorry, everybody. Okay, now we're going to I'm just going to put it in a Oh, I said it was that page for us. Yeah. Oh, should I put the day on there? Yeah, I didn't put the day And you, you might put the time to this 740. I don't know. I think it is all constant. I, I, yeah, I, I agree. I know that's good. I think that's a good, good approach. Well, here's your pen. You bet. I keep taking that pen. Municipal laws, collection statutes are thin. Stated about much more defined okay. procedures. It's odd. Hopefully, okay. it's going change soon. Now it's got to go back in the box, right? Right, Daisy? Yes. Okay. He's going the involved. It's very valid. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's yeah. they would they would actually oh, it's going to the folder, Yeah, the book goes in here. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, that makes that way easy. We don't want to deal with that. How does that act? Do you want this book in here? No, actually. Okay, and then we're going to leave. Check out your list. Don't lose that. I don't lose that. Okay, Deb. Okay. Keep it with me. Keep it just okay. take a step then you guys. Okay. So we're good. I'm still here. We're all good. Okay. Um engineering update. What do you got for Justin? Uh the course of the package that uh like a couple of plans just look on that one we're working to our graph is working. I'll look at that October 7th date. Um try to be available for that. Call to a consult would be good. We can have the projects there. I get community feedback on it. I'm not available a while, but at least have everything here in possible for Sam's. That way, the community comes up, you guys can take the job. You know, they know it's been passed back to me. So, uh, early October, I'll go forward to find that to the committee on that. My clients are a little bit start getting some stuff out. Attention based on the fourth month banner on that. They are still in design on that. There's some for permitting aspects of that to get through. It will likely be in September before they get permitting through to through their department. So we still have to see final plans of that before we approve anything. 
So I'm hoping if planning plans will review it. There's some other areas of concern that have been passed along. A new banner for the really just upstream in between uh, the ball field and you know, public history along Avenue. So that area just making sure with the increase flow well, that's going down through there and it doesn't flow back all around again before it gets done the basement. Since you're talking about the detention, um, I'm just wondering, Justin, do you and Banner have a understanding or a timeline on looking at the DA and our enforcement action settlement agreement between DA and our and Grand Park Capital to make sure that there are these lines? So ISG has not been enforcing that hand in there. Previous conversations and agreements that was between Grand Park Capital and DA and R. I will ensure once we go through with this new detention basin that they are in compliance. Okay. Okay. The, the only concern I have is that where the developers ask the city to accept title. Yep. That we want to make sure that the city doesn't assume the liability of the issues over violations of the stormwater permits. That's that's Grand Parks. Yeah, absolutely. So that'll, that'll be one uh, stipulation based on that acceptance. We're working through okay final punch list within that development that will include erosion control items. Okay, that way to your point, once the city does accept it, that's got to be clean. Yep. Okay. okay. I just um, one thing I know we've been working on, John, trying to take the one that is in Grand Park the bike path and getting that worked out right now. I relate to Justin. I had him um, send it off to you. One thing that I'm concerned with is there was really no grass or anything planted up there. It's it's it's, it's we there's erosion on the backside where it appears the water has eroded on the backside since there was nothing. I take it on as for a city standpoint, there is probably going to be a cost to rehabilitate that to get it to seed it to grass. So I just wanted to know that before we probably take ownership, we should discuss with both parties and say, you know, what is each party expecting? Because right now, I, I suggest it's a nice bike path. It's just, it's a lot of weeds. I mean, it's 99% right. So it's just in nine old. Right before the effluent, there is a low spot that was holding water, and then when they're going to try to maintain it, they you know rutted it up. So I mean, it's just I mean, it's not like it's a golf you know golf course that wasn't one hundred percent finished, but we've had bad two bad summers for growing grass. It's just I just want everybody to be aware that if we would take ownership of it. There would be a lot of a huge cost for the city to get that rehabilitated to where it would actually be a nice green space. I really appreciate you took the time to take a yeah, look at that. I just, I mean, I just don't want it, but I mean, I'm, we're talking, I mean, I'm pretty sure something was out to work together to mediate it, but I just want to make sure everybody's aware of it. Because so, we also talked about the curb stops and the gaps in the, the back of the curb stops. So have you had a chance to, that, yeah. okay. Yeah, I've been running that very a lot of it's coming out of contract availability. So, uh, like nearly on a weekly basis, if not two, three times a week. That's fantastic. And I think, Council, you all have emails. I mean, I've, I've started in practice. Everybody gets the same information. So, Grand Park's lawyers, Mr. Hefty, the Council, the Peens, and everybody is sharing the same information and all moving the same direction. Mm -hmm. So aren't we going to add the DA and R to that list too? It's added. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's we're we're on it. It's yeah. just really important because we're all moving to the same goal. So it's really important that we're all on the same page and there isn't a he said, she said, or some people has right. one email and another person has another email. So it's really super important yeah. that all of us are working with the same body of knowledge so we can move forward. Because obviously the goal is to accept the development so we can all just you know, keep moving forward. We want all of all of us. I think I can speak on right. behalf of everybody that we want this done and moving forward productively. Always have. It's quite a process because the subdivision regulations, and of course, the city would need the same way. The city needs title insurance before it takes title to any any of these improvements, and that's in the subdivision regulations that the developer has to provide title insurance. So I went ahead and communicated with Grant Park's people, and. Uh, 
we've got a uh, land title guarantee in the photo instead working to put together a title insurance commitment and material contracts. Anything that affects use and ownership, real property needs to be addressed in the title commitment because ultimately we've got a title insurance insurance company that will stand behind and, and warrant title mm -hmm. um, defect any against any defects of title. So it's a so we're trying to be thorough. We're trying to follow the ordinances that have been designed for us, and we're also find, trying to follow the normal best practices for engineering. So that's so where we're at. Accepting public improvements in a development is way more than just saying, okay, we'll take care of the streets now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and it's important that you guys know that this has never been at a standstill. This and Justin's been working tirelessly at this. John's been reviewing yeah. stuff tirelessly. So even though you guys don't see what's going on, there's a lot going on to move this forward and get it where it needs to be and to continue to move it forward so it's not stagnated. We all know winter's coming. So we all want this to be in a good place. So we're just hoping that, you know, everybody is willing to work towards that goal because we certainly feel that we are. Okay. Anything else on that? I think the biggest thing is we just don't want to make Ryan work two jobs by accepting it that we have an outstanding work. So, yeah. That is absolutely a valid point. Yeah. It's a valid point. You know, we should be able to accept the in reasonable yeah. condition, right? It's worth it. So, no, that makes sense. What else do you have? Um, well, the kind of part is working through that. Um, we're getting close to more research value engineering. So, uh, one of our cost estimates was quite high. So, I'm trying to get a project for the city. Very cool. And in uh, transparency on this one too, because we had talked with the um, school about you know sanctioning softball, I had thrown him a curveball and said, "Hey, so what would it take to put in a third softball field up there? Can we do that? Is it possible? You know, what that what would that cost? What?" And so he knows that that's another X factor and all this. So if there's a lot of moving parts in Baltic Heights. We have a lot of land to optimize. And trying to figure out how to meet all, all of the ancillary needs because you know there's certain people that want basketball field or courts, and then there's some people that want splash parks, and then we got a softball field and the ice rinks and yeah, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Just trying to get all the boxes checked to make That's everybody happy. Welcome to town. You know what? Even if you're sitting there with a hose yourself, <laughs> I think you should talk to um, the fire department okay. about their water uh, wars because they did a phenomenal job with that, really? by the way. <laughs> So maybe, can you guys just have a water war for us all summer long and call it our splash park? Would that work? <laughs> you, you don't have anything else to do, right? There's nothing else to do. Okay, what else you got? And then the last two, just one minute. Uh, Resubmitted and submitted today. Mm -hmm. So people are asking, when do those projects start? Like, when will we see them start? It depends on contract availability. So the goal is to get a bid this fall. I have been talking to some contractors there, some contractors that are hungry for work right now. Um, I'd be a little hesitant to bring up vote match this fall because, because this risk is free. You know, we're dealing with winter. Um, I'm going to get kind of paid. Turns into a mess. That one will likely start in the spring once we get through the weather. So May, maybe June time. Right? Depending on what about six to seventh? Months. Isn't that kind of a, a smaller project? Is that something we that's for the water main looping? And I would highly expect that one to be able to fill this hall. That's one that's of those nice, nice projects that you can get in. You know, it's in the right way. It's not going to affect residents as much as the street or for the direct way to store. So, fourth to fifth? Fourth to fifth, there will be portions of that that we would likely be able to jump in this fall. Um, a couple of moving parts in that one too. There are going to be some sections that I would like done, especially along port there. So if we can get in and get that, um, it's a pretty quick project through there. So I would expect a contractor to be able to fix so, that so there's a bunch of trees in that section. How I've been asked, how are you? Are you cutting down the trees? Are you navigating the trees? What are you doing with the trees? I can provide you a plan where to save as many trees as possible. Perfect. A, for construction wise, we don't like turning around at a cost of the project. Right. We gave it to all the roots. So we can just. I have a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, maybe it's a silly question, but when there, when this is under process with the water loops, is there going to be interruption in service that we need to be make people aware of? There likely will be interruption in service if there is. I write into the plans that we provide a seven day notice. 
as we all know, seven day notice, a lot changes to between there, a follow up 48 hour notice. And then if it's directly affecting, say, Ryan here, I'm going to go up if our guys knock on his door that day and say, you know, we're going to be out to water for an estimated six hours. Is there any way to make sure that it's only Ryan that gets his service <laughs> 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 So sure. we can do that. <laughs> Right, we'll want to utilize the texting service to update the uh, residents for any or interruptions. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We hand out flyers and stuff too. The best thing is uh, the best thing is for the residents get my phone number that way. You know, oh, sure. check questions. <laughs> so we'll just give everybody your phone number and they can call you directly. Yeah, I mean it's it's probably about projects yes because it's a lot easier for them to go straight to yeah. me than to Lacey to me. Oh, serious. I'm dead serious. Oh, yeah. oh that's I didn't Fantastic. I know you're kidding. No, dead serious. Wow. Yeah. That's customer. I'm gonna reroute some of my calls to you. <laughs> Project specific. Oh <laughs> dang it. Dang it. So if they want chickens. And, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we send them to Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else? So that's all I have. Thank you, Justin. Okay. You're up, Mr. Patsy. Yep, school crossing signs. Okay, well, I'm just from like our budget meeting. I'm trying to maximize what we have up in the budget this year to see if we can move things around. So that one should have been probably on the bottom of the list. I think that's, we'll easily budget that for next year. And for everybody's information, the blinking signs for the school, their um, city, purchase city property, they're just getting old and need to be updated because it's a lot harder for the SRO and the school to update the information of when they're supposed to come on and off and all that stuff. So it's just, uh, we got the price, it's like about $2,700 to replace one sign so that's what we're just looking at for budgeting just getting that so we can have those replaced so they're going to be sign up dates so hopefully maximize that they're always going to work when they're needed to work so that was one thing but um just kind of jumping around with second one this okay so i finally got some bids from a couple different ones um i think we authorized like eight thousand with the two that i have it's up to 80 one sixty seven nineteen eight thousand one hundred sixty seven nineteen. That does not include the wood chips. The wood chips I did, and we we're kind of going to budget that for the following year to replace. For engineered wood chips, it was I think forty three hundred dollars. So they're they're not cheap. So they're pretty expensive. Yeah, four forty four thousand three hundred seventeen dollars. So that would be a whole truckload of chips, which would probably fill would for surely fill at least. These two up to the 12 inches, which are required for ADA requirements and stuff like that. So I'm looking at for the two playground equipment, it would be a swing set, like a tripod swing set that we have in Bird Park, but then there would be another one with toddler swings. So there'd be two toddler swings there and two belt swings. So one that we were going to move to Water Tower Park would be a post, a two post swing set with two belt swings, and then it had a cantilever that had a topper swing. So that's a little bit more expensive than what a standard tripod swing is. I'll just, uh, for the tripod and getting this shipped here is uh, $2,659 um, for the post one. It is going to be, and it's got some other things in it. Just the loan for the piece of equipment is 2000 The freight, which is crazy, and I haven't read, figure out if freight if it could go somewhere else, it's $1,000 for the freight. So it's $3,200 or $3, pretty much just to get that swing set here. They also have, they have the best price on all the plastic orders, which you've seen like in uh, River Park. Um, they had the cheapest price on those. The other companies had them like three times a month. So where's that company that you saw this? American Playground is out of Sioux Falls for the post one. The tripod one. Oh, ship to Sioux Falls. Ship to Sioux Falls. Yep. Where are they shipping it from? They, that one comes from Louisiana. Road trip. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> you can get there and back in 
Yeah, so over it. Yeah, so that's what that one is. Not much merge pull out of, I think. Right. That's definitely a page. Oh, no, this one comes from three, but they actually have drops in Minnesota. So, Burn Builder. So, I'm just looking at that. If, I mean, that's kind of those two places. This is a playground that we're replacing to pay $200. We want to go in with the free to pitch killer, but he said he would look at another manufacturer. He goes, the playground equipment was more expensive, but the freight was cheaper, and overall, it was more expensive. Wow. Unless you want me to go a different route and try to find what's, someone else. What's the better quality? They're okay. both uh, commercial grades. It's just the two different things that with doing the post one. I mean, we could go with another $2,000 tripod swing set. Um, but then it, there would be no, it'd either be belt swings or the thing is, you'd be too close to the trees as well. You can put two sets there, yeah. and then if you can't um, have um, you know one on one swing with a belt and one swing with a toddler, it has to be. That's why that cantilever was kind of the best of both worlds, because then you at least had a toddler swing there too. So I mean, I, I we could go the other way too, and not do the one with the higher shipping and go with another tripod, but then we're just losing up there. You have to pick if you want. The younger kids or older kids. I think if you're spending the money, just do the cantilever so you can satisfy both options. Yeah, for it's more expensive, but I mean, it's 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 a wash on the freight, basically. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, so yeah. Then so then I have two little contracts with them, and you guys want to, you know, for those two from like I said, it's eighty one sixty nine or six seven nineteen. We had talked earlier about eight thousand. For the whole project, so it's a little bit over on that. So I mean, and I mean, there's going to be the hidden cost for the concrete and stuff like that, but we'd be able to have that in the car fund. The one thing is, I think the, the cantilever one, I think they said two to four weeks for shipping. The regular tripod was I think four months, so that one would be installed in the spring and all that stuff. The other thing is, is we have to take a tree down. It's a big tree. <laughs> Makes me a little nervous with other stuff there. I think mean, someone said that they'd be more than willing to cut down. I'll be there to observe if someone wants to do it. It's we have it's citizens a, that do that for it's a living, tall so. ash tree, and I was surprised mm -hmm. how tall it is. So I mean, it's one thing if it was just I mean, I had a couple, three, four guys, it wouldn't be so bad. But having someone in the lower that make sure it falls the right way, I think that we want to have someone hired and get that lined up, but it wouldn't be so pushing because that one's going to take longer to get that equipment here. So yeah, that was, you know, what we talked about, I don't know if you want to make a different motion to approve to sign these two contracts, and then I can get that stuff ordered, being sent here. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, I can make a motion to uh, sign both contracts to get the playground equipment coming. So you're making a motion to have, um, to give the authority to Ryan to sign it? Yep, okay. however you can sign it. Unless can we speak. make a... Did we make a? Um, uh, we put forward a dollar amount in the past for eight thousand. We need to change it or anything. Eight thousand for the. Yeah, it was eight thousand. We're over that. Yeah. So the, then, so do we just do like an amendment to it, or what do we have to do? Well, we, we just have to make a new motion. Too. Okay. But this would be coming out of that. We could get the chips and like next year. Next year, fuck this. I'll second. We get a first, we get a second. Anyone else? Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. So, so you got your stuff. The first that we talked about was the crack ceiling and massive repair on the bike path. Um, they came in, we talked about it in the past. So this is just coming here to get approval for the $6,220. Have that work done. So that's that's just so it's in public record since it wasn't on an agenda item during the yeah, that's right. budget meeting that we oh. had. So that's it. I just probably so I'm not make sure. Anyone want to make a motion on the one, please? I'll make a motion to approve it on the ceiling of it uh, like that. I'll start to Okay, we got a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Oh, the budget meeting we talked about with that push box. Yeah. So that's $12,220. So this is just a sale order for that. I'm spending money. Like, yeah, I feel like yeah. <laughs> this way it's, it gets even better as the night goes on. Okay. Bigger dollar on the Oh, oh, are we are we over budget now? Oh, this is we had that money. This is using what we had left in streets for this year. So it's just trying to maximize. So there's more silver, still more. Yeah, this is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're gonna call you high maintenance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Snow. 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 Where's the snow gates? Yeah. I'll get you a grader, right? Well, ultimately, obviously. Pretty much has thought along. We've bought a lot of snow removal equipment in the last really three years, probably. Just trying to maximize efficiency. That's the yeah. goal. This will speed things up exorbitantly down Main Street here. Um, eliminate a ton of time that we spend. All of our other equipment still works well for different areas. The equipment, is, everything else is still good. It's uh, other than the power that I'll talk about in a second. But yes, this is just updating it to speed up. With, I'll just say, we had an immense amount of snow last year, which was crazy. This push box, we have a very good plow push box. This push box is probably three times the size of capacity. So when we had all that snow, it took me probably two days to push the downtown. That was nice. that was probably 16 hour days to do the downtown. Hopefully, we don't ever get that much snow, but that, you know, if you cut it in a two thirds, it would be, you know, probably less than a day would get. For as much snow as we had, usually we don't have it. I'd say push box that we we're getting is what the city used to have. If everybody remembers what they used to have, the same size, pretty much the same thing. Back in the day, I don't know, snow, it took probably an hour and a half to clean the whole downtown. With this other push box, which is smaller, it took, you know, six hours to seven hours just to clean the same amount. And the edges are different, where the edges on that other machine are. Four thousand dollars, where this is a rubber edge, so it's gonna last longer. Like the one we had on previously that the city had, it was never replaced, and I think they had it for almost twelve years, probably pretty close to that. So I mean, it was one that you just adjusted it, but it was never replaced. So, and that just, was that was one that was attachment. They're attached differently to this. Correct. is actually an attachment for the loader, not chained onto the bucket. Correct. So it's a little bit speeds up time, make yep. it more available. So if we have less liability snow or go with sand, it's a lot easier. So yep. it's just maybe trying to make stuff as efficient. If we don't get as much snow, it would be nice, but it is. It's how, just how trying to the development affect this from since Justin was concerned about your workload. This will well, this will speed up the workload down here. And then but last year, last year is a hard one. But what about the new development? That's where that other plow is being oh, talked about. Okay, like, okay. Sorry. <laughs> we're not there yet. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. that's something. Sorry. But again, we're just trying to, for everybody, what we had budgeted previous year's budget or last year's budget for this year, there is funding left like over. So we're trying to maximize it this year. Say we weren't able to purchase something, that money would go back into the general fund and it could be reallocated into this budget that we're working on right now. So it's it's kind of a hit or miss us since we have the money right now. That's why I'm requesting it, trying to get it as much purchased now. So then next year's budget is straight, just you know, not hopefully for this equipment kind of upgrades. Well I'm assuming the price is only going to go up. Correct. Do you need tires, tinted windows? <laughs> That's later the discussion. But the tires okay. are a huge thing. So that's that's later so <laughs> I don't see it. I mean, it's going to get used. I don't see a reason why we couldn't put it. And if, if the money's there this year, it's going to go up next year. I make the motion to approve for the a, a box split. I'll say So we have first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any? Okay, motion passes. Right. What else do you want to buy? Total on that one. Okay. $120. Okay, the next one we'll yeah. discuss in the planning was a, a room for the skid board. So, nothing in that federal surplus. I looked at that, there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. I've got a quote from Bobcat from Pipers 
for $7,290. I went over to Dell Diesel. They sell a, a Jenkins brand, and that was for $5,600. The only thing my my heartache is, is we spent a lot of money on a Bobcat, and when they were explaining everything, I mean, it's a fancy, fancy machine, and they pride themselves on their technology, and with Bobcat, they have their smart technology, which their machine, you yeah. plug it in, it knows what it's plugged into. Everything works together. The hard part is, is that, you know, I can't say that it's better than anything else because we have Snowboard that was brand new and then went right. down right away. So, but it's everything's warranty. Yes. Yep. That's it. I, you know, that Jenkins, it, it's, I would say it's just a you know, normal brand that someone made a broom, probably a very good broom. It's just, my verdict is it's, it's not Bobcat. The money's two hundred dollars or two thousand dollars more. But we've had, you know, good luck with service if the service is available. But I'm gonna say rooms are I mean the things out a little bit because when I was in Del Rapids, we had a Bobcat room and you know the orbital motor went out. I mean, it, you know, you gotta kind of work on it. I just I run both the, the Bobcat one is a little bit better. So for the money, it's a better product. But that's that's one thing we talked about because with taking on Grand Park and then Baltic Heights, we have a lot of bike path to maintain. We have a snowblower, which will be great. That the one thing is then it always leaves a little layer of snow where I was going to well, hopefully take that off the asphalt. So it's you know hopefully other than what drains across or melts run across, it should be pretty clean. That once the sun comes out, it melts it off and it's a, you know everything's cleared off. Again, as long as we don't get snow like we did last year, where there's two to be three feet of snow in the park, you'll probably use it for more than the lower anyway. A lot of the times, um, just went off of what we did in Dell's, if there was five inches or less, you just use the room and you can just turn yeah. it off. So, I mean, so that's what I'm just looking at. I mean, if we wanted to, you know, this was just quotes. If we wanted to look, you know, with being a little bit longer, I I can talk to bikers to see, you know, what the availability. I know last year when we had issues with our snowblower, I think they had four rooms come in and four rooms went off pretty much the same day. So it's like one of those things. I don't know if they have a lot of stock and they to get it. So just trying to look at it, we did talk about, I think this was, I think, available for funding if we stretched the budget a little bit to make sure. I think Linda felt comfortable that we could do that. So that would just be another thing. Brian McGreevy wanted to know if you wanted any, any special accessories on this, like, you know, lights on the wheels or like little bells so people knew you were coming, like an extra truck. Okay. Yeah, there's no furniture. What's on my pass? So it's really it's just a part. So that's, I just, you know, I'm bringing these we talk about it. I know. So it's just, like I said, it seems like we're spending a lot of money. I'm hopefully maximizing the budget. The hard part is, is to say we don't do it, we'll just try to budget it, you know, yeah. for next year or something like that. So that's what I'm just trying to maximize that budget as much as possible. Well, and from a historical standpoint, this has been, like Travis said, this has been a point of discussion for the um, administration um, and the council because um, we knew picking up this development, it was going to create some more work. And they were trying to figure out how to be as efficient as possible with the headcount that they had. And so this isn't anything new. It's just we're finally at the place. So. Travis? Yep. Pretty oh. much. But those brushes last. Ryan, those brushes last quite a long time? Or? Yes. As long as the brushes last on the brush. They can last a long time. It depends on operator air as well. If you put too much down pressure, you can go through them. But if you're using them for snow. I know just reading on the Jenkins one, and I'm pretty sure yeah. the Bobcat one is the same. It has it's it's designed for someone to run it with too much down pressure because then it, it has a little stuff. It has a little fold in it to yeah. adjust it because they know it. It's it's so it, I mean honestly, like I'll say anybody that's random, it's it's kind of sometimes a little bit hard to tell what you do have down pressure on. Mm -hmm. it. Just the way you have the angle set up. So you have anything else that you're trying to squeeze into this? But well, that's that's good. okay. We can start with the Just plow. When we talk about the bigger plow, the twelve foot plow, we kind of left it as the plow there that we have, the ten foot. It needs cutting edges, so there's going to be probably all fifteen hundred dollars worth of cutting edges put on it. So that's where I can said, do we want to put fifteen hundred dollars into a machine that I'm probably going to 
try to budget for next year to replace, or do we try to see what we have left? I mean, like I say, push box there, probably the room. I can work with the plow. I mean, I can put a, another set of edges on it to make it last. It's going to be smaller, it's people smaller, so you figure every round. What is all how to go on the payload? Okay. So, so we can skip to that end. What I'm saying with looking at overall, our payloader is a 2012 524K. It's got 30, 100 hours on it. It is our primary snow removal to these weapons. It's getting old. We've already, I've already had people call and ask if we'd be willing to sell it, but that's just what I'm looking at for not right now. But we have the new pickup is going off next year for payments at the middle of the year. The year after that, the dump truck was off. So the rate is about there. There's sixteen thousand dollars worth of payments for equipment. But again, the tires on that are probably, there's probably 30% left on them. They're, they're reward, but not on what I did not have. I didn't have to put chains on last year. With all the snow we had, it actually did very well. So I was happy about that because chains are a mess. But that said, I know between eight to $10,000 probably for tires, actually. So it's just like everything's getting up there in years where we are on the backward side of uh, buy and replace. I mean, back in the day, say eight years old, it might have been might have been a 50-50 probably swap for a machine. Right now, I'm pretty sure a machine would cost one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. We might get a six twelve. Are you looking at a six forty four or a five forty four? Five forty four. Like, well, you wouldn't upgrade to up. No, sorry. we're at a five point four. I go to a five forty four because that's going to get you one hundred seventy five towards the border. I don't see the need for the city. Okay. Anything. A 624, you're going to get into that 200, right? Under 200. That's a big machine. And then the, yeah. you add a couple, I think, three to 4,000 pounds more on that machine. We're at 524 and 544, I think 1,000 pounds difference. They're not, they're just more horses. Mm -hmm. That would be what I look at for upgrade. Looking at that, because then for future if replacement, you're looking at a bigger pit machine for a gravel pit or something like that. 524 is that 150. Where you have small operators, small dairy or something, they might take a 524, but most dairies and everybody's going to a 544 to 624. So they're bigger machines. So it's more looking at the resale eventually. It's, you know, but that's that's where I just like saying, you know, the next couple of years, it's just like I hate, I don't like to spend money, but it's just like if our machine goes down, everybody knows because our pickup can't keep up and that payloader does the whole downtown. Um, and it does a lot of bigger roads. Oh, um, and Ryan would know if the city is too full. I mean, it's high commodities when you start a machine goes down. They have plenty of machines there, but yeah, but when a lower goes down, you're hurting. So no, that's just that's just you know, and that's your main piece. I, I didn't bring it up in um, the budgeting meeting, but then I started thinking about it. You know, just with the plow and push box and stuff like that. And I'm like, geez, if our loader would go down, then I mean. It's you know scraping by to go see you rent, and usually I think RDO is pretty good. You know it has something on hand, but you know then you're renting a machine and trying to get that machine here during the snowstorm and stuff like that or anything. So is that that loader's pre emissions, right? Correct. It's a tier three, so yep. it is a much lot. higher value than that's that's what it is. why you right. had someone inquire. Someone that bought our old machine had inquired said, "Are you guys selling it yet?" I know they, they, I know a handful of people that have asked about it because. And that that also makes me double back is why do I want to sell something that's so high demand, high value? Because it's a in the, in the machinery world, pre emissions is important because emissions add expense, mm -hmm. especially down the road. And warranty is not so bad, but five years down the line, if you have a EGR and depth system or whatever start going bad, and that's that, huge expense. And that's yeah. and for everybody, the we a lot of it doesn't get a lot of use in the summer, other than fishing yeah. off the tree pile and stuff. So that's usually when your sensors go bad yeah. and then you got that. I mean, which is the scary part is, is we upgrade it. I can't say that it's, we've had pretty good times without any issues that in the future that we need, can't guarantee that a little bit more. So it's just- There's no that, crystal ball that, yeah. that tells you what you're going to run into for issues, but- Yeah, so that that's that's just kind of throwing it out there. But right. It's been a solid machine, no, no major issues, right? 
It's been a solid machine, no major issues. Oh, I've got to have on have RDO tape service on it. Um, for some reason, the RPMs have been creeping up, and even when you go into the computer and reset it, it it'll reset for a second and then it goes back up. It's at about at an idle at 1100 RPMs. Okay. I can't tell. I don't see anything with the throttle assembly. If anything been moving on it or anything, I've talked to them and I don't know what's wrong. It could be just the pedal. And I pulled up on that. It's come back like maybe five to fifteen RPMs, but it hasn't like came all the way back. Or it should be the throttle. The, the 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 sensors in that yeah. in the pedal that we've had that go down. But that's our biggest issue on that thing. Where I say we're doing pretty good. Well, one issue that Mine's, we we yeah. will probably fix is the auto diff lock we have a manual diff lock the auto diff lock one of the eyes is gone or is not working with it was 1500 to 2000 dollars to fix it so i can push the foot it's just as easy as yeah, yeah. spending 1500 dollars to have it on right and then disengage it so okay. so that's it so that's what i mean that plow would be the one thing would be another thing to stretch but that's i mean it's if the budgeting is there, we'll know more maybe in the next month or two. I mean, that I'm just kind of giving a heads up. Just I can get edges at any time for that old one and swap it on, and that'll work. But if we have towards the end of the year, something's available, I'll probably be requesting again. But I think the room we might want to get going just so we have it. I don't know. That's up to you guys. So we could sell the ice cream. <laughs> Why did you suggest that? <laughs> yeah, I got no problem going with the broom if it makes if it's being processed. So I mean, if we have the budget for it, and it's yeah. going to make life easier, and obviously less load on the bike path too. If we're not dragging a floor across it, yeah, keep the bike path in better shape. I'm not opposed to going with the. Uh, the broom at all we'll just have to revisit everything else yeah it sounds like this is kind of pushing the rest of our yeah kind of like that that sign the signs it was trying to maximize get the order so we have it and then next year we start with a fully clean budget and then the same thing too with the loader tires and stuff they're good we'll see what this year goes through but it's just kind of just letting kind of where we're at you know we spent a lot of money on the equipment it seems like it never stops until you get everything updated and then you have quite a few years that you don't need it. Yeah. I'll make a motion to prove the uh, expense of snow broom. With broom. With Bobcat? Or With Bobcat, yes. Yes. I'll second that. So we have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We'll the total on that, right? Is seven thousand six hundred and ninety dollars ninety three cents. So seven seven. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Um, He's got a hand. You know, this is the inquiry. Yeah, it feels like an inquiry. Excel <laughs> Energy. Um, they will come out and give us estimates of what lights would cost if we deemed or from our spot. Um, they don't do the light survey. They would say either we request a spot or we have an engineering firm coming in and do a light analysis. But like he said, okay. most typically it is as your intersection unless you have a long block, then you put it in between. It goes between 250 and 300 feet is usually where you put like. Did you inquire with, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with any city engineers you could talk to about what a light survey would actually cost a city? I just figured you drive around that and put a light in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Save some money. You think about that, Justice. Save some money. Didn't have to do that and we can finally do the study. That's, that's, I mean, that's it. I, I Are you mean, driving out around at night with him? <laughs> I went and honestly, I just drove it today after since we had our meeting. Uh, Valley View, uh, Grand Park, Bell's Crossing, Baltic Heights, they are pretty good. Theirs are pretty consistent. It's when you get down to, I think, when Belma Avenue, they're not at the intersections. They kind of went every so often. So I'm just going off the word. There was in Richard Circle, there was a light. Jan Circle, there was a light. There was a light. Um, 
not on an element of it, but down the street, halfway down between Bonnie Circle, but on Bonnie's top. I'm happy to donate the light at the top of Bonnie Circle to anywhere. Right so the next light <laughs> there was uh, not up to Douglas Drive Boulevard. It wasn't, so it was in between there. So it's like, you know, so then from that Douglas, not at Douglas Boulevard, but it went all the way to Jams and then back to Douglas Drive there. Was, so, I mean, there is a lot of dead spots. The thing is, if you got to look at where the closest power is, yeah. and that's the hard part where the transformer is and stuff. So then that's where it was not so bad. Elm Avenue down by Bird Park is a dark spot because there's nothing there. The hard part is where the city side is where our storm sewer is, so you can't put anything in the ground there. So you go across. Well, then the power is on the okay. park side so it's just like you know so i mean but that's what we, they said you give us an estimate of where you want holes possibly they'll come in and give us a cost estimate of what it is i appreciate you doing that so so that's it that's just something to look at but really and i didn't drive around the south side of lovely to see those but up there you can tell that there it's kind of sporadic there is a lot of i'd say dark spots because of just were there putting street lights back in the day? Trees really mm -hmm. affected too. So yeah. Well, that's like if you look, there's a street light right by Nate for Chodas. Mm -hmm. And then you come all the way around my house and go clear down the hill, and there's a one clear to clear down on oh oh yeah. So that's what it is. I mean, that's kind of what I think they figured if you're close enough to those intersections, you light enough intersections, but on a long drive like that, you're missing a lot of Access. So that's something and that, you know, I've got, you know, the gentleman's number that I spoke with. So it's just get a hold of him if we want to, if we have an idea of where we might want some more lights. Well, and like light. Travis said, he's got, it's pretty black over in the house. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. that is dark. Yeah. Cause I think there's one, there's one. There's one at the corner. So I turned around and I know a tree cleaned oh. up. With him. And then, but I don't think I was just looking at it when I was driving by. I don't think from old down to third down to lovely there is a street light anywhere on there and I don't think there's anything down to ash. Yeah, um, so on the ash and second. Yeah, the one in ash and second went down on a storm. Did we yeah, get that one? That, back been, up? that power line kept getting ripped down. I don't know if that one never went back up or not. But, I can't remember. But I don't think around the old trailer court, I don't think everything's been removed and I don't think there's I know there wasn't anything on the fire department side going towards yeah, yeah there the isn't apartment. So that what I would say was the dark stretch too yeah. but yeah so that's just something so if you're driving around and you want to put it where you think an address put a street address and give it to myself and then i can just reach out to them and say these are the addresses we have that you guys can come out and take a look and give us a can, cost we, can we have that actually be like someone who wants to go do that and not just to if you feel like it put a flag somewhere can we assess for that okay. yeah. like your joke Sorry, I can drive around at night, find yeah. in my rough area where lay it on a map, slightly yeah. figure out where roughly the need to be. Or yeah, if you're out and about, if you want some lights or whatever, just trying to give you some lights and you just throw one in the curb okay. line. But I, I mean, I, it, it's getting dark so quick here. It's going to be evident here pretty yeah. quick yeah. that we can get them figured out right away. So, because okay. I'm just going to say it's nothing too bad against Excel Energy. I don't think they're timeliness to get it done is probably not this year. I, no. I don't think they probably can put it in their schedule to get it done right away. Right. So it'd be something probably next year. Yeah. Okay. Does that work for you, Travis? What? Perfect. Just keep the conversation going. Yep, no, it's good. Progress. What else? What? I don't feel so bad about my parents. I you shouldn't feel bad about your pet. I feel bad at all about my pet. You went to make it cheaper than the project. Do you need some pencils now? No. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think he won. Oh, but they probably signed my like paycheck. So, so there. Oh, see, we have a lot of fun. Okay, don't we have a lot of fun? Okay, what's next? Moving on. Ryan, it's your turn. What's up? What's next? Please. Okay. Nice um, we received the letter from MCWC about the rate increase for water. They are going up 15%. Oh, that's Ooh. lovely. 
So currently we are paying. So let me let me say this out loud and very clear. Rural water is upping their rates for us to get water for the citizens by 15 percent. Yes. So the city is not raising rates because we want more money. We have to raise rates or we can't get the water. I want that to be very, well, very clear. Or we go negative on it. Yeah. Yes. When does that start? When does that start? Um, the new rates start in January, so we'll see in our first bill of February 20th, 24. The new water rate will be $2.84 per thousand gallons. So currently right now we're paying $8.31. Like if, if you look at your minimum, get our minimums. Are they regulated to as to what increases they can pass through? I don't know. Yeah. John, do you know? We have ordinances on this, but it's been a long time since I've looked at them. You know, I thought they just were stay up to date with. I would think that, yeah, I mean, if you want a legal answer, I'd want to check. Yes. But I'm suspecting work. You can raise the rates. Yeah, I think you. Honestly, I would I go off as we've always when you we set the rates, whatever yeah. we feel is the need. Right. I'm going to say with what I had in Colton. Colton had it wrote in an ordinance okay. that any increase from rural water was immediately going to be a, put on the utility bill because wow. Colton had did surcharges and stuff like that before, and everybody was kind of questioning that, so we put it in there. That we're not going to raise the rates unless you know you'll know enough. You know we'll have a hearing, but if it's rural water is increasing the rates, we'll just pass that on. And okay. I'm hoping to do it by resolution. Oh, okay, I thought we'd have to see. Yeah. So, I'm pretty sure that's what we didn't have. But, but if you want the legal answer, it'll pop the check, and I can do that. Would you please? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Rate increases are never fun. Anything else? Any other good news? Uh, I'm still waiting on some information from the county regarding the uh, I guess these um, assessments. Mm -hmm. And once that comes in, hopefully we can work on this water department and get it all tied together so you can improve the budget. Okay. Okay. Good news is that our welcome sign is done and we are on the schedule for next week to have it installed. Yay. You might want to start thinking about. You want to just have the advertisements underneath it for all of our local businesses. You want to have them update signs if we should send out letters or some sort of notifications. We have one spot that's open. And about a year ago, one resident called and they were going to hang a sign up, but we've not heard anything from them. It's always been a free space and it's always been first come, first serve. Just so you know, those signs with all the businesses on it, it's just been a courtesy. For the commercial businesses, obviously, commercial building a commercial base is a, a priority for us here. And so um, it's never anything that we've ever charged a service for. However, based on my observations, I've noticed some of those signs really, really need to be updated. And so um, my recommendation is we ask everybody that has a sign if they're willing to update it unless they've had one installed in the next you know, last couple of years or whatever. And then um, we could send out a letter to any other remaining businesses in town to see who would like whatever. Because what if somebody chooses not to update their sign? Mm -hmm. Right. That can happen. And then um, ask them if they have any interest in either having an open spot or being on the waiting list for an open spot. So that way we have priorities put to call because we don't want to be like, well, who do we call? You know, and then somebody else says, well, come you didn't call me first. So. That would be my recommendation on how to handle that. Is there something else not to show you off of? Colton. Sure. We actually, I think they're two by two signs. So if you come into Colton on every every way you can get into Colton, they years ago they put it, and so there's probably like thirty businesses listed on there. But they're two by two, so you can see them when you're driving down to the third. You know, if they're such a third, you can read them. But but they put on it every avenue coming in, so it wasn't just in one side; it was you know on the opposite side. 
but I mean, it, but they're smaller signs. I mean, these are nice and big signs, but then you be able to allow them to sort of kind of change the size. It's um, not a bad idea. Are you going to have any guidelines so that there's consistency in the size of signs? Because if you get into some of these communities, you've got this, that, and the other thing, and it looks really junky. Well, and ours are all consistently the same size. Ours is already consistently the same size right now. Yeah. So they're three by fives right now. That's the way it should stay. Yeah, definitely. Size is required. So the, the point that Ryan's bringing up is, do we want to consider changing the size of the sign if we're going to update everything? And I, I do know that somebody made a sign like just two years ago. So I don't know what the cost or investment is for the businesses. So maybe that's worth looking at before we ask everybody to do new ones. Just a thought. Well, if, anything, if, if you could put one on the east side of town, then that one could be a little smaller. I'm not sure where we would have a space east side of town. That's so hard for because then there's that yeah, was common. Yeah. And I know that back when they had what issues with trying to get a sign. Because mm -hmm. it would almost have to be off the road on a landowner next to the, yeah, the on the other side of the fence, you know? Or you said, yeah, yeah. go in the ditch, it has to be a certain height and so far away from the roadway. And the county's not going to want that because they have to mow that. They only mow the shoulder. They don't mow the ditch. No, they mow the ditch. No, they one. I mean, one, one wanted to probably that be a bomb for such a piece of ground or something. Put a sign there. Their property. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you'd have to. I'd have a conversation with the county first to see if they would have an issue to put it just outside the barbed wire before leasing land. Well, in our city limits on the east side, is that at 7th Street now? I don't think. On the north side of the road, it's still County. Yeah. South side. Yes. South side, except for where Doug and Hobble lives. That's County. That's so we only have like half the road, is what you're saying? Or? From the, I would say the road approach from where that okay. sidewalk was going to be on the east side of Doug and Hobble to the other fence line of the property. The, mm -hmm. Village crossing, yeah, that would be city limits there. But after that, it's county, county in between, and then county on the other side of the road. So the storage units, correct. Mm -hmm. You really realistically want to do it. You're better, your best bet would be seeing if you can go put it in that corner of that field, right? So it doesn't shave off that corner. That's what I was thinking, too. Dumb that corner back and plop it down right there is be your most suitable location. But I was thinking, yeah, definitely. And for a farm, it's easy because it just saves having to cut that yeah. corner so sharp. Yeah. Are Valens a land owner of that field? No. Who's the land? He just wants to start. I don't know. I don't know if we do that. Uh, yes. Rent it, but I think it's somewhere around the rent plate. Mm. Well, maybe it's worth looking well, at. Well, uh, it can be a conversation. But that's what I think. Okay. Well, what do we want to do, guys? Yeah, Phillips Crossing on that side. Do other towns do that though? Put it on the other side. I bet you always put it on the side you're driving in. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Sometimes they're welcome to their town signs are on opposite sides. I mean, it's just kind of where it is. I would say I think welcome to Madison. Then they use and they use both sides. Should they keep coming? Yeah, Chibble equipment is. I think where that welcome to Madison yeah. sign is on that side of their. Okay. 34. Well, what do you guys want to do? You want to think about it? You want to talk I about it? I want to think about it. Okay. Talk about it. Yeah. Nope. What else? Um, recently, Ben completed his, he did some training for the Lagoon certification and passed everything. So part of that is that he should get a 50 cent per hour rate increase. Oh, uh, well, kind of was. Negotiate with the yep. like every certificate. Yep. Yep. So we need a um, a motion to approve that fifty cent wage increase for that certification. I'll make a motion. Is that the motion. first? Madison, it's the second. I'll second. All right. Everybody. All right. Everybody wants. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, I'm not let's get that going. I got it. I got it. So, do we do that as the uh, of the date of the certifications? Is that what we do? 
Oh, what else? The last thing is just uh, kind of a congratulations and, and media thank you to to council for starting allowing us to start that ACH one time twenty dollar credit uh, out of the five roughly five hundred meters that we have in town. There's one hundred and twenty of those accounts that have signed up for the auto pay. That makes your life easier, doesn't yeah. it? Nice. Nice. Very cool. Fabulous. Are we going to talk about the, um, the, the readers? Like, well, the battery meter update? For the updating for like mm -hmm. the future? Yeah. It's, we, um, it's just something we're going to have to start budgeting. So we'll just probably start it next year, but it's nothing okay. that we have to. It's just a maintenance for everybody. When we went to wireless water readers, the lifespan on those batteries they said it was about 20 years so we're on it was 08 when that all went in there so we're on year 15 so we're going to start ending possibly the lifespan of those batteries so we're going to try to start in the next four years to replace all the older registers on the meters because those will eventually fail and then we will lose contact with their readers and then you won't be able to read the water meters in your homes. I think for Android is doing that right now. Real and water it, just kind of has been doing it for the last couple of years, updating and stuff. So so that's just what it is. And then what it will be is we'll just budget into our standard water budget to replace a quarter of the meters open starting next year. Yeah. You know. Anything else? Okay. I think uh, quick Deb, I think when once that sign's installed, I'd like to see a uh, an email go out to let people know that it's in place. Yeah. You're gonna have to translate. Once that sign's installed, he wants to see an email go out. Is that what you said? Yeah, to citizens just so they know that the new city signs in there. I'm sure there'll be a nice Facebook post or something along those lines. Lacey speaks yeah. with I don't. I'm getting used to it being called the office. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Even if I don't know. <laughs> the sign would be just fine as well. Yeah. Thank you for translating. Yeah. Okay. What else we got? Community relations update. That's well, mine is a, a lot quicker than Ryan. So I would say <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the newsletter real quick. So we're going to have a new newsletter going out. We're aware that not everybody has Facebook. Um, and so we've kind of been working on putting together a newsletter that has um upcoming events um like an ordinance of the month which is super riveting <laughs> or like the new ordinances so we'll put all those in it maybe like a blog and um what else i don't know super fun stuff a recipe, a joke, a recipe. Yeah. yeah that's some fun stuff far side comic yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no so, what we're trying to do is create a communication path for those people that aren't connected on Facebook so that we were covering all the vehicles of the communication. So you have the shopping news that goes out once a week. You have, um, you know, the recorded messages on YouTube, you know, all the meetings on YouTube. Then you have, you know, the city of Baltic Facebook posts that you have. And then we have the texting service to get, you know, short term stuff. And then we thought a newsletter is the next most logical thing. And really it's just trying to mirror what the school has done successfully and communicating to the parents of the students where you get a text saying, hey, check your email because there's something you need to see. So then we thought we'd start with the newsletter and if there's more timely stuff that you need to see, then we can, you know, just let you know that it's in your email. And so that's, it's just trying to cover all the avenues of communication. So everybody, you know, whether you want to or not, you're going to know what's going on in the city. And if so. you don't have an email, we we talked about, you know, if there's certain people that just don't have email, we will mail them out. Absolutely. So we're go the goal is, is trying to get as many people who have email get the newsletter by email. But if for some reasons like, no, nope, I want to touch it, I want to have it mailed, then we'll, we'll honor that. Because it's still, <laughs> let's just say I would prefer, I would recommend that we honor that because it's important to get communication to the citizens and it's still a minimal price to pay to get information in their hands. So that is all I have. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's it, you've only been working on one thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few things going on. <laughs> Mr. Hughes? I think the conversation with Justin and his engineering brings up too pretty well in what I 
would have had to have said and it's more meaningful during Justin's talk. So I, I have nothing. Thank you for bringing meaning to John's reason for being here. I Thank appreciate you. that. I appreciate it, My life was worth living today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the last thing we, we have to talk about something really important, which is, um, yeah. Yeah, the employee wages. And so um, we do need to go into a brief executive session for this, though. So if you don't mind, um, for people that are online and are still hanging around, if you can just um, hang tight and then um, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I need someone to make a motion. Yes, is, there, um, is that the last item then? It is. I have a I have yep. thing. Okay, hold on. Um, I had a person that approached me about a fall garbage and more pickup. That's right. So somebody was asking if um, we have the spring garbage and more, you know, well, clean out, you know, where you put everything in the, you know, we have the different, you know, place. Yeah, yeah, citywide cleanup. Someone asked if they would do that, if we would consider doing that in the fall as well. So we have a fall one and a spring. We just contracted through garbage and more. Mm -hmm. We allow one a year. That would have to be something. It's in, should be in our contract for the next four years. I don't know if they'll do that. Separately, but well, I wanted to know if they would do that, what would be the charge and what day they would be available. I called garbage and more, and it's actually written in their ordinance with the landfill in Sioux, in Sioux Falls um, that there is only one pickup or one event per city per year that's permitted with shared costs, so it doesn't cost up a bunch of extra anything outside of our contract. So in this case. It would cost us at least thirty five hundred to five thousand dollars um, yeah. plus cost of their equipment for trying to get their employees in on overtime hours to come right, um, into us. So you're saying five thousand dollars ish is what you're saying? Yep. Hold on, yeah. Let me do the math on this really quick. And she she said that they have a few other cities that have done second second round like this, and it's just not not the turnout that you think it would be. Okay. For the cost of it. Okay. So it was just a question. Yep. What about what about contacting the landfill about getting a free pass for saying I mean, that's what she's saying the landfill can do that one time. So, so Richard Moore uses that one that free pass. Oh, sure. Because oh. you know they do that in a couple areas in Sioux Falls and then they pass out a free pass to all, all the houses. The whole thing does that they get a voucher that they don't yeah. take. Yeah. So the one landfill. one trip. Okay. So just to give you a perspective on this, um, I don't know what a voucher costs to do that, or I don't know what it takes to dump, and I don't know how many people actually get involved in that upsite, but if we took a $5,000 hit on that and we divided it among all the homeowners, it would run us all about 11 bucks a piece. So. I think, I think one a year is good enough. And I don't have a dog in this hunt. I just wanted to let you know what it breaks down to. I missed it for the last two years. Yeah, I, I got stuck in the last two years. Yeah, yeah. So, and no, it sucks. Is it because you don't have anything you want to throw away or you're just not available? Or you yes, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> yes. No, I was out of town. Thank you very much. So it wasn't that you couldn't use it. Okay, just, moving on. Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's Brian. What did you need? Just call my cell phone for the executive. Yes, okay. definitely. Definitely. We're, we're thinking we're going to leave you out here. So, <laughs> just kidding. Oh. Okay. I make a motion to move into exec yes, session at 850. All right. Can you say that?